Stability is in short supply in Egypt post-revolution. The election of the Muslim Brotherhood and the recent vote on the new constitution has split the country. Hamadin Sabahi is a former presidential candidate and opposition leader. He is highly critical of the new government and Mohamed Morsi and the content of the new constitution. Euronews' Mohamed Sheikh Ibrahim asked how he saw the results of the recent referendum. This constitution has failed to unite Egyptians. It did not get the necessary approval which would have guaranteed a compatible constitution. It's therefore divisive rather than being a constitution of national assembly, an inclusive, mutual, national project. But Mr. Hamadine, democracy means one must accept the outcome of the vote. Yes, democracy means that and we respect the results, but with one essential condition, which is the integrity of the referendum. Democracy is not just a means to access power, but a way of practicing this power. It looks like the power in Egypt has been decided by democratic means, but the one who is in power now wants to destroy the stairway that lifted him to power and tear it down to give this one individual a solid grip on power. Are we to understand that the Muslim Brotherhood has fabricated the results of the referendum? Yes, this constitution, which was supervised by the Muslim Brotherhood government, is full of flaws and breaches and violations which question the integrity of this referendum. Can you give us some articles of the constitution which are at the centre of the conflict between the opposition and the presidency? This constitution has given the opportunity for basic rights to be abused, especially freedom of speech, opinion and creativity. By stipulating the freedoms that should be practised under what it calls the basic rules of the state and society. This raises a question for those who misinterpret the Islamic Sharia and use it to crush freedom. Now the same people are the majority and they abuse Islam and Sharia. They see this as a restrictive tool, unlike us. These people are now using the Islamic law as a tool to threaten liberties, to discriminate and spread hate. They are at the centre of political life. They can use these articles of the constitution in a negative way that could offend Islam, Sharia, freedom and the nation of Egypt. You have spoken of the popular momentum to tear down the declaration and Egypt's new draft constitution, but the turnout did not exceed 30%. How do you explain that? Simple. The Egyptian people now have a deeper crisis, which is how to live and to eat. Many Egyptians believe that the controversy and political dispute comes at the expense of providing opportunities for a decent life and jobs and development. And this is certainly true. That is why they are reluctant to participate in what they see as a kind of obstacle to stability, a stability that will enable the provision of decent and fair economic conditions and a better life socially. Abedin Sabahi, you have been accused by your political opponents of having a lust for power and your defeat at the polls means you are not in government. How do you respond to that? I'm not greedy for power and it was not an individual desire to run in the elections. I have no intention to run again in the future unless the Egyptian national movement sees my candidacy as serving the national interest. Only in that case would I run in future elections. In any case, I do not see that power in Egypt is something to desire. But if it is a collective decision, I will accept it. It's not an individual thing for me.
يؤدي مصلحة بقرار جماعي سأقبله إذا كانت قرار فردي لن أتقدم للترشيح. The victims of the bloodshed in front of the presidential palace were from the Muslim Brotherhood. Is that right? It's not true, and this is false information. The Muslim Brotherhood claim that. The claim is incorrect and they have no proof. Were the weapons used during the violence fired by the armed militias of the Muslim Brotherhood, as the opposition claims? Certainly, the process of expressing opinion was peaceful until the Muslim Brotherhood turned up with its organised groups. I wouldn't call them militias. I don't think the Muslim Brotherhood has militias, but they have organised groups. They started the violence in front of the palace. We accuse the Muslim Brotherhood, and it's a clear accusation that they were the main cause of the violence that happened in front of the palace. We are awaiting the outcome of the final investigations by prosecutors. Prosecution investigations uncovered the lies claimed by the president in his speech about conspiracy. These investigations will prove, as we believe, the guilt of the Brotherhood. Its guidance office specifically directed their youth to instigate the violence that took place in front of the presidential palace. I would like to talk about another impression from the grassroots, those that took to the streets in the revolution. They say it is better for you to stand alone in opposition rather than join with a group which is considered to be part of the former regime. It's true that I have been criticised for joining the National Salvation Front and being seen with Amr Musa and Said El Badawi. I can be questioned. But we did not and will not cooperate with those whose hands are stained with Egyptian blood and the martyrs of the revolution or those who are corrupt and think only of money. We stand together with the people. Yes, the pair were part of the former regime, but Amir Musa would never have Egyptian blood on his hands. One may attack Said El Badawi, but his Wafi party, which he leads, is an integral part of the Egyptian national movement. It has a part in this country's past and future. Has Egypt gone from revolution to dictatorship? Is that what you believe? The existing regime is not a democratic one and it's not a reflection of the desires of the revolution of January the 25th. It does not fulfil Egyptian ambitions to have a democracy and broad participation in decision-making or an all-inclusive social justice. المرشح الرئاسي السابق وأحد أبرز قادة المعارضة في مصر سيد حمدان صباحي شكرا جزيلا لك شكرا, شكراً.